Welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. Major League Baseball on tap. It's the New York Mets and the San Diego Padres. And we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. Almost ready to get underway. Today's starting pitcher, you Darvish. What do we need to know here? Anytime you have five pitches to work with on the mound, that repertoire can be a real weapon in terms of keeping hitters off balance, man. It's, it's one of those things that I'm going to be looking for in this for one. Man. Does he have a Instead feel for all of those pitches, Randy. or is he just able to get one or two over in the strike zone where he wants? Now, it's tough to do to be able to command all those pitches, but if he can, he is going to be very tough for the opponent today. Brandon Nimmo stands in now, looks at that one inside. And a foul ball. Kicks and fires. Got him. Snap throw. Always a tough call to make as a third base umpire. You're a long way away. It's not a great angle, and it happens so quickly, but it's part of the job. Sometimes just a coin flip. Well, what do you got on it? I think he got it right. I think he went. Yeah, I think so, and I think that's a good call. But you talk to umpires, and they say sometimes it can be really difficult depending on what color the bat is, what color the uniform is. Things that you just wouldn't think about come into play when they're trying to make a quick call like that. What if we just went possession arrow? <laughs> That'd be great. In the air, foul off first. Dives, but he can't get it. It's a foul ball. One down, base is empty. And takes low for ball one. Chris, you Darvish debuted with the Rangers back in 2012. It's been a pretty successful big league career. He's been an all-star multiple times and a guy with all those pitches. He gives Pitchcom a run for its money, I think you'd say. What to now? Hit weakly on the ground. Bogarts whips it to first on the run. Nice, efficient start to the afternoon. That's two out. All right, let's take a look at the lineup. This is a veteran-led lineup right here. A lot of players with plenty of experience singing. Yeah, no doubt about that, Boog. These guys have been around the game for a long time, and they may not have the flash that they once did, but they've got the wisdom to be able to understand different situations, be able to think with the opponent and sometimes in front of the opponent and you always seem to see a team like this. They come to the ballpark, they know how to get down to business, and they understand what the job is at hand. Francisco Lindor at the plate now. That's one ball, ball one. No strikes. Next offering is in for a strike. Yeah, I remember when he came into the league and talking about seven, eight pitches that this guy had, and wow, you're just scratching your head. If you're a hitter, what do you look for? On the ground right side. The throw to first. Lindor retired. And the inning is over. And the Mets go down 1-2-3. And now the Friars will get their first chance. No score. You're dialed into the show. Back here at Petco Park. And on the hill, Max Scherzer. Yeah, and when he's on, he's a real treat to watch. I've become a fan myself. You know, he often takes the pressure off of his hitters to score a lot of runs, but they have to be careful to not just go into a slumber. They've got to put up some runs, make it a little bit easier for this guy so he doesn't have to battle every time Leading that he's out there. No one should be surprised, though, if he no settles in and takes control of the game right. and throws a shutout. So right. digging in now for San Diego, Trent Grisham. There's a strike. No ball. One strike.
Scherzer deals. And it's even up. In May of 2021, Max Scherzer threw a complete game as his wife went into labor with their third child. Game finished, two hours, 37 minutes. Scherzer left Nationals Park, made it to the hospital just in time for the birth of his daughter. She was born four and a half hours after he threw the first pitch of the game. Scherzer ahead one and two. And a ball evens the count. Swings through it for the K. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Thought it was a pretty good that pitch. Exactly. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs oh. in that location. Hitters, especially oh. with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. Juan Soto stands in now and watches strike one. Do you love the Soto shuffle? <laughs> yes, I do. I think it's a little, uh, little flare, a little flash at first. Maybe uh, seen as arrogant, but I think uh, the, the talent backed it up and everybody was okay with it. Oh. Next one misses. One and one. So here's Scherzer. That's in there. And that is strike two. To third, Baden. Throws to first, and here this afternoon, two quickly away in the bottom of the first. As we take a look at the Padres lineup, they're dealing with a top-level arm on the mound, so this figures to be a tough matchup for them. What's the key to the offense today, Singy? Well, Boog, I think when you got a guy that's this talented on the mound, you've got to find ways to disrupt his rhythm, make him uncomfortable a little bit. The guys that can handle the bat and perhaps, you know, bunt, bunt for a base hit, Get him moving off the mound. If you're in the box and he seems to be just in a flow, step out, mess up his timing, somehow try to get in his head a little bit, and then when he does come in the zone, you may only get one pitch. You better not miss it. Makes the play, and it's out number three. Three up, three down for San Diego. Scoreless after one. Top of the second Leading and stepping in for New York. The first base. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's Alonso. not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. You know, you translate on base percentage. It's basically this. Teams that have a high on base percentage, they don't make outs at a very high rate. As my buddy Joe Sheehan no, says, that. OBP is life. Out to short. Bogarts with the throw to first. One up, one down. That is good. The second baseman, Jeff McNeil. And now here's Jeff McNeil. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. First pitch doesn't find the zone. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris, and it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit you know, both sides in terms of pitcher's arms, you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup, and I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. Second inning here, no score. And one and two. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Good late cut for the strikeout there. That thing that really it. got in on him, man. You know, the cutter isn't really yeah. a huge swing and miss Maybe. pitch most of the time because it's not really meant to move a whole lot. You're just trying to miss the big part of the barrel and maybe get some weak contact, but that one right there did a whole lot more than that. That was a really good pitch. Come on, boss. 
Righty to the plate. Hit on the ground to the right side. Tosses to the pitcher covering the bag. And that is that. Down in order go the Mets. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Back here at the ballpark, bottom half of inning number two. And now Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz. The wide to kick the pitch. And a strike. Scherzer, a former Cy Young Award winner, he features a four seam fastball. A slider, a changeup, a slurb, and occasionally uses a cutter. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, he didn't like those first two pitches down an 0-2 hole. He's going to have to battle, hope he gets a mistake. Scherzer gets the punch out, and there's one down. Well, that at-bat seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three-pitch strikeout. You've got to be better Not at the plate stop. right there, at least to foul Denver. something off, extend that at-bat. And here comes Sander Bogarts. First pitch, oh, and he outside. just misses. Singy, you know, Xander Bogarts is actually a twin. His twin brother, Jair, signed with the Red Sox initially and played a little bit in the Boston organization. That's pretty cool. On the ground, right side. Gets it to first. Bogarts retired. Batting six, the right fielder, Fernando. Fernando Tatis digs in now. You talk about the power and the speed together. Well, we knew he was going to be a stud just coming up, making his way through the minor leagues, and quickly at yeah. this level, an impact player. Foul ball there. This lineup's going to have to find a way to make him work a little harder out there on the mound. I mean, he is just mowing them down. He's settling in. You've got to make him uncomfortable. Maybe step out of the box, call timeout, do whatever it takes. The next oh. offering misses. Ball one. 0 2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him up. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. Scherzer winds, kicks, fires. Fouls it off, still one and two. Well, you put good velocity in the head of the hitter. He's got to get it ready early and then change speeds. Keep him off balance. That's the goal. And the next pitch is way outside. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Padres down in order. We'll move to the third with no score. Welcome back. Top Leading half of the, the third match. inning. Here's Mark Canna. Mark Canna. Hanna measures six feet, two inches. 34-year-old vet, a former first-round pick back in 2014. And the pitch. On the ground to the left. Throw over to Cronenworth. Lead-off hitter gone in the third. The designated hitter, Daniel Vogelback. Daniel Vogelback at the plate. Vogelback throws right, bats left in the eighth spot in today's lineup, and they went out and made a trade for him last season. First pitch just misses. And there's a ball. The 2-0 is in for a strike. 
goodness, I think he just took the best pitch he's going to see in this at bat. You don't get many like that in that location. I don't know if you take that pitch against any pitcher out there on the mound. That one off the mark. And now three balls and a strike. Swing and a high fly ball to left. Drops in for a hit. Couldn't run it down. To second, but way too late. Safe there. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Just Not a cookie enough. down the middle. I mean, those are the ones you dream about. The ones in the cage, you're just hoping you get in the ball game. Right down the middle, not a whole lot of velocity right on top of it. Runner in scoring position now and a good opportunity to push across the first run of the ball game. Here's the catcher for the Mets, Francisco Alvarez. Splits the plate, and that's strike one. One out, and a runner at second. Next one is off the plate. And that's ball one. Good eye right there. Next offering is foul back. Pitch. This one popped up. Foul ground first base side. Snags it on the run. Two down. Good hard fastball up in the zone right there. They look really good coming the in, but field. so That's hard to get on top of as a hitter. Brandon. Here's Brandon Nimmo. Nimmo. Struck out swinging his first time. And that one fouled off. Man on second, two down. In the air, left field. Soto gets under it. Makes the grab. And that will end the inning. Mets leave one. Still no score. And welcome back. Leading and now the first baseman, Padre. Jake Cronenworth. The first baseman, Jake Cronenworth. Scherzer, back to work. Jake Cronenworth, the Michigan kid. He played at the University of Michigan. Rays took him in the 15 draft in the seventh round. Grew up playing a, a lot of hockey. Eventually made his big league debut. Oh, now this is blasted. Way back there. On its way. Gone. Jake Cronenworth will touch them all. And the Padres take the lead. He put a charge into that one. That was a lightning swing right there, no doubt about it. Just an excellent swing all the way around, and it had that sound coming off the back that gets everyone's attention. Got a pitch to drive, short to the baseball, squared it up, and the batsman buried it out of here. And now it's Austin Nola. And that's in there for strike one. And the 0-1. Swing and a foul straight back. On the ground right side, McNeil. On to first. That's an out. 
And that's the first out. Nice that recovery enough. after giving up the, the homer. Haas Young Kim. Now here is Ha Sung Kim. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. The wind of the pitch. Right side, McNeil. Slings to first, now two out. Now batting, the center fielder, Trent. Now it's Trent Grisham to the plate. He was a strikeout victim his first time. Boog, this guy's just a tremendously talented center fielder. Gold glove caliber type out there. Offensively, he can do some things, but you know, also has some streakiness as well. I think the key is just trying to find a way for him to be consistent day in and day out. You know, he saves runs in the outfield, so that's going to buy him more time to work things out at the dish. Next oh. offering is down low. Well, he looks more focused at the plate and working the count after that first at bat strikeout. That one is absolutely belted way back there. And that one is going to go. He'll touch them all. And they add on. It's 2-0. be pretty dangerous when you fall behind in the count 2-0. You've still got to try to find a way to keep that hitter off balance. Well, he wasn't able to do it there. The hitter did a nice job of turning that pitch around, not missing it in a hitter's count. Juan Soto now. That pitch in for a strike. It's 0-1. Chris Soto was a runner-up for the National League Rookie of the Year in 2018 to Ronald Acuna Jr. And then a runner-up for the MVP in 2021 to Bryce Harper. Is this a guy you think could win an MVP somewhere down the line? No, oh, I expect him to, and not just oh. one. I think more than one MVP considering how young he was when he got to the big leagues, just 19. The wind and the pitch. Bounding ball here. Rolls foul. The one-two. Swings and misses, struck him out. But the long ball was working in this inning. Not once, but twice. And it's two zip. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back here in San Diego, John Chompy with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Starling Marte. And the right hander back to work. Out to short. Sends it to first. Marte retired. Up next for the Mets, the shortstop, Francisco. Francisco Lindor. Lindor comes up to the plate. Grounded out his first time up. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. In there, and it's 0-1. And you played behind guys, and they loved having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. That's inside. Boog, and the one thing about that is speed never goes in a slump, and defense shouldn't either. Hitting-wise, you can struggle, you can lose your mechanics, but the thing that you can do consistently every single game is play great defense if you're talented in that way, and this is what this guy does. And now the count is even. 
Two balls, two strikes. And a ground ball to first. And that one finds its way through. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Now that the first baseman, Heath. Dominant Alonso. performance for him today, Boo. Just two hits allowed so far. No runs across either. And he's had an answer for just about every hitter he's faced. So I don't think this hit is going to knock him off his stride too much. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonzo. Bounce to the left side. Can't field it cleanly, but plenty of time to recover, and that's the second out. The batter number one, second baseman, Jeff McNeil. Jeff McNeil stands in. In there for strike one. Lindor stands at second with two gone. That one drifts inside. One and two here. Swing and a base hit. Lindor zipping around third. He will score, and it's a one-run game. Well, they found himself behind in the count right there, but he didn't give in. Brett Beatty getting ready to hit. Grounded out his first time. Off the mark there. Ball one. Two outs. That misses the zone. Two balls, no strikes to count. And that one just missed off the outside edge. He hasn't fallen behind in the count like this all day. He's in danger of walking his first batter right here. Next pitch in for a strike, three and one. And here it comes. In the air, out towards right center. Tatis puts it away, and that is that. But they pick up one run on the RBI single, and this is now a 2-1 ball game. Back after this on the show. Bottom of the fourth, Leading down up, the third baseman, the Brandon Dixon. The third baseman, Brandon Dixon. The right-hander back to work. And that's no. down and away. And yeah, that's outside. Last couple of pitches, breaking balls away. I think he's going to have to come firm inside to be able to open up that location if he wants to go back there later in this count. 2-0. And this is inside. And there's the strike. offering is fouled back. The wind of the pitch. 
That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the A.B. going. That one misses. So a leadoff walk. So digging in, Nelson Cruz. Three-pitch strikeout last time Nelson. up. Got to put up more of a fight in this Cruz. one. That one's in there, 0-1. Oh, he's looking great so far. It helps when over 80% of your first pitches are strikes. He might be able to go the distance if he keeps this up. And it's one and one. Nobody out. Runner at first. Here comes a pitch. And now it's even up. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Well, that right there is just a pitcher's pitch. Tailing away from the hitter. Low and away with no some batter. good Number action two. at the end. You know, even if he gets the Xander. bat to that ball, it's probably just a Low weak guard. ground ball to the opposite side. Tell you what, that's a tremendous two-strike pitch. Now here's Xander Bogarts now. Even though Bogarts, at the beginning of his career, signed with and then played for the Boston Red Sox, his favorite player growing up was Derek Jeter, and that's why he wore number two. Yeah, the right-hander deals. That clips the corner. Kicks and deals. And a swing and a miss. So far, all we've seen in this at bat are fastballs. Look for him to slow it down right here ahead in the count. The pitch. Lifted in the air, right center field. Marte moves under it. And it's caught for the out. Now batting, right fielder, Fernando Tatis. So two down now, and here is Fernando Tatis. And there's the strike. Dixon off of first with two away. Scherzer to first, and he's back safely. Tatis waits. Swing and a miss. So two strikes on Tatis. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. One left for San Diego, but they still lead it 2-1. to one. Back here at Petco Park, the now the left fielder, the left fielder. Mark Canna. Mark Canna. The pitch. And that one just misses a ball and no strikes. That's a little bit low. Fought off foul.
the pitch. Popped up. Bogarts moving under it. And out number one on the grab. Now that designated hitter, Daniel. Here's Vogelback. Daniel Vogel back. Doubled in his first A.B. He's been going after these guys consistently, and as a result, he's been able to keep his pitch count low, throwing the ball very well right now. In there at the knees for a strike. The 0-1. Line drive, base hit. The catcher, number four, Francisco. Francisco Alvarez. Alvarez will hit next. He popped out his first time. And that one cutting but missing down low. one -oh. Just missed. Last two pitches have been down in the zone. Pitcher clearly trying to get that ground ball double play. But in this count, you're going to have to give in, elevate his pitches, and get back into this at bat. And he deals. Swings through that one. Check swing. Appeal to first. No, he held up. Out to center. Grisham settles under it. Falls it in for the out. The center fielder, number nine, Brandon Nimmo. Brandon Nimmo now at the plate. Inside corner, and that's called a strike. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. Foul ball. Well, you can't really adjust your game plan for that last pitch. Guy hasn't thrown it very much. you got to focus on the stuff that he's throwing up there most of the time. Next offering One, way off the plate. In the air, pretty deep out to center field. Grisham makes the play, and that's the third out. Mets strand one. They're down two to one. Back here at the ballpark, we head to the bottom of the fifth. Stepping in, Jake Cronenworth. Jake Cronenworth. And a pitch. That one missed. And a 1 0. Sliced hard, but foul. Left hand hitter waits. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. Left hand batter waits. Foul ball still a one and two count. The pitch. In the air, right side of the infield. Alonso drifts towards it, and he makes the catch. And there's one away. 
Now battle. The catcher, Austin Nola. Now the catcher up to hit, Austin Nola. High fly ball down the left field line. Canna makes the grab, two away. The batter, number seven, second baseman. And ha now Sung it's going to be Ha Sung Kim. Rolled out to second in his first at bat. In there, and it's 0 and 1. Chris, we were excited to watch him pitch. This is a little more along the lines of what we we're expecting performance wise. Yeah, Boo, great pitchers like this. You may get one opportunity in one inning to get to them, to get some runs up on the board. And if you don't take it then, you may see zeros the rest of the ball game. The 1 1. And that one fouled off. And a 1-2. Out towards right center field. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. That is the inning. Nothing doing there for the Friars. They lead it 2-1. Welcome back. Starling Marte up to him. The right fielder. The MO for him is contact. A guy who's going to deliver average, not a ton of power. He's looking to hit a line drive somewhere. Well, that's why it's a team. And when you look at a lineup, he's a great two hole hitter or a guy that you could put at the bottom to help turn that lineup over to have some momentum for your top hitters coming up to the plate. Deal one. Tap back up the middle. Now one gone in the top of the sixth. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce now an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. And now it's Frankie Lindor. One for two. Singy, where are you on F1 racing? Are you a fan? Haven't gotten there yet, but I will at some point. Francisco Lindor, a big fan of F1 racing. His favorite driver is Lewis Hamilton. Oh. Goes down looking. Chris, third time through the order, and a couple of quick outs for the starter. Now yeah, he's been very frugal base. today, economical he's with the pitch count. Alonzo. Here's Pete Alonzo. Alonzo, in his fifth season, 28 years old. And he's a two-time home run derby champion. The 1-0. -oh. That clips the inside corner for a strike. And it really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. 2-1 pitch is in there, and the count is even. I always remember watching Johan Santana pitch, and when he was in his prime, you would see a lot of guys out in front, right-handers pulling that change up in the stands and then fouling the fastball the opposite field up into the stands. Kicks and fires. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. And a pitch. Line drive, base hit. 
Showed a lot of fight with two strikes in that the AB. Solid swing from Second start eight. to end. On time with yeah. everything. Really good balance. McNeil. Nice extension. And he met it out front for the line drive knock. Now at the plate, Jeff McNeil. Beautiful swing in his last at bat. Opposite field knock. Ball oh. one low. The 1 0. There's a strike. One ball, one strike. And a 1 1. And there's a foul ball. Alonso, the runner at first with two gone. Next pitch just misses. Ball two. It's a good take. At the belt and fires. And that one is lifted in the air. Grisham sprinting for this one. And that one hops the wall. Alonzo is waved home. To the play, save! It's 2-2. Two -two. Back to back base hits. Got a good pitch to drive, stayed short with his bat path to the ball and caught it out front. And he stayed long in his follow through. That's how you split the gap. And that's pretty much a double every time. A chance now to take the lead. And at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. Brett Beatty digs in now. And the first pitch misses for ball one. One ball, no strike. Just missed. Activity in the bullpen for San Diego. Brent Honeywell Jr. getting ready to come in for Bob Melvin. Hill, a left-hander, also throwing. Rudder at second, two down. Swing and a miss. And it's two and one. Just not able to catch up to that velocity. Man at second. Ripped to third, but handled. And that'll end the inning. But a run will score in the inning on this RBI double. 2-2 game. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. And welcome back. Bottom of the sixth inning. Up now the Padre leadoff man, Trent Grisham. The pitch. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Now the 0-1. Ball one there. And the righty deals. They say it went. One ball, two strikes. Next pitch is outside. Offering his foul back. And down on strikes. Snap throw. 
Now batting. Left Here's field. Juan Soto. Juan. Soto. Chris, Juan Soto is one of the best young hitters we've seen come along in a long time. Of course, helped the Nationals to win the World Series in 2019, and he won the batting title. Hit 351 in that shortened 2020 season. Line drive, short hop to third. Gathers and throws. Two up, two down. Now batting, the third baseman, Brandon Dixon. Brandon Dixon now. He's 0 for 1. Dixon measures 6 feet 2 inches, 215 pounds, and he was a third-round pick back in 2013. Just oh, missed. Down. Right-hander kicks deals. He was late there, strike one. So now one and two. one and two. Clearly he was sitting on a fastball right there. It just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just gonna have to battle two strikes. He takes it himself to the bag and that'll do it. Three up, three down for San Diego. And this game is still tied at two and two. We go to the top of the seventh. Here's the left fielder, Mark Canna. Mark Canna. Darvish, back to work. He swings and misses at the first pitch. 0-1. Well, he's back out there to begin the seventh. That surprised you at all, Chris? Yeah, a little bit. It was a little rough sixth inning there, but his skipper's got a lot of confidence in him. But trust me, they will keep a close eye on how he does in this one. Righty to the plate. Foul ball, it stays, nothing in two. The wide to kick the pitch. Stays alive. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0-2. Got him looking. Called strike three and a fastball up in the zone. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. Daniel Vogelback up now for the Mets. In there at the knees, strike one. And a pitch. There's the strike. Off the mark there. It's a ball and two strikes. And that's awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now. The next pitch misses. The count now two and two. He's really tightening up his hitting zone with two strikes here. I love it. Absolutely frozen with a backdoor slider for strike three. The catcher, number four. So up next for New Francisco York, Francisco Alvarez. Alvarez. Misses off the inside. 
and it's one to no. If you're the pitcher, you've got to go right at this guy. It's the number nine hitter in the lineup. You can't be afraid of contact in this situation. Next offering is foul back. The one one. Swinging a foul straight back. On the ground to third, Dixon. Tosses to first. That ends the frame. Nothing doing for the Mets. Score remains deadlocked at 2-2. Back here in San Diego, set for the last half of the seventh. Now it's the DH, Nelson Cruz. Cruz. The wind and the pitch. That one missing inside. You don't want to get beat by a fastball in, and he spits on that one. And the pitch. So two balls and no strikes. Struggled a little bit in this one. Couple of strikeouts earlier, but doing a much better job in this at bat to get ahead and find a good hitter's count at 2-0. and oh. Inside, just missed. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it. And here it comes. It's a leadoff walk, and that's the go-ahead run. Well, that could be a tone setter for the inning. Four straight Leading pitches off. and well, leadoff batters on base. We'll see if the next guy time. waits until there's a called strike before he takes the bat off the shoulder. And here is Xander Bogarts. Bogarts, who wears that number two on his back for his idol, Derek Jeter. Check swing, now a look down to first. And yes, he did, he went around. High fly ball down the left field line. And that ball is gone. He blasted that one out of here. And they jump in front in the seventh. It's 4-2. That's their third home run of the game. They're having a lot of fun at the plate in this one. They've got the long ball working for them on autopilot. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch. Absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. Here comes the skipper out of the dugout, and he's ready to make the move. Max Scherzer is done, and as he heads for the dugout, we'll take a quick break. New arm on the mound when we get back. New arm out of the bullpen, Jeff Brigham. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their guys a chance to fight back into the game. Next for the Padres, Fernando Tatis. First That's offering, ball. misses the mark. One -oh. <laughs> And that's outside. Action in the Mets bullpen. Brooks Raley. Smith, a right-hander, loosening up as well. And that's in for a strike. Next offering clips the zone count even at two. And that just misses. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Hammer 
Here's that one. Deep left field and forget it. Tatis goes yard. And they tack on to their lead. It's 5-2. Back-to-back -back homers, always a special feeling at the ballpark, especially if it's your team that does it and those guys get to slap hands at home plate. This is the kind of thing that can really fire up a ball club. And here's the first baseman, Jake Cronenworth. He's already homered in this game. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Righty delivers. That one pushed foul out of play off to the left. Oh, and two now. One, two. Spoils the two-strike pitch, and he'll see another. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off-speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. He goes down looking. Well, he froze him with a great fastball right on the corner. It's kind of like bowling now when you think it. the ball's going to get into the gutter and somehow it just hangs onto that edge and knocks down Hold a pin. On. Well, he got the outside corner of the plate and got that called third strike. Nola in the box with one away as he takes ball one. Next pitch has popped up. Takes it in for the out. The batter, number seven, second baseman, Haas Young Chair. Ha Sung Kim, the next up for the Padres. And the first Whoa. offering is not close. Two down, nobody on. Popped up. Alonso on his way over. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that'll do it. But the long ball was working in this inning. Not once, but twice. It's 5-2. Major League Baseball is on the show. Luis Garcia taking over on the mound. Uh, this guy can bring it velocity-wise. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Padres. Number 66, Luis Garcia. And now the center fielder, Brandon the Nimmo. Bench. The, the Mets in striking nine. distance, but Brandon have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the laid-off man. I need a good at-bat out of him right here. Got to keep things airtight defensively right here. On your toes, ready to make a play. If you can get this to the ninth with a three-run lead, it should That's be right. a W. Going one. Well, an at-bat can be a little bit of a dance. Strike one here, but a few more pitches. We'll see how it turns out. Next offering misses. And the count is one and one. Bullpen activity starting up now. Josh Hader, the closer, is getting loose. Ball to strike. The pitch. That misses off the outside edge.
The 2 1. Just off the outside edge. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3 1 count. And that's ball four. Leading off for the Mets. Here's the Starling Marte. Starling Marte. And that's in there for strike one. There it was, a high-velocity fastball in the zone. I think a little frustration from walking the previous hitter. He's got good stuff. Pitch inside the zone and trust it. Next one misses, and that is ball one. Next offering popped in the air, right field. Dunks one into left. Lead runner to second, so two on and nobody out. Now batting. Nobody out. Lindor has a chance to tie it. One for three. Well, it's critical right here that they bear down and turn in some quality at bats. Try to chip away at that lead because if it gets to the ninth, that closer's coming in. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Nimmo, the lead runner at second. Marte at first with no outs. Just a weak fly ball this time. Soto really on his horse for it. He's got it. And that is a big first out. The bat. The first base. Pete Alonzo. So now it's the four-hole hitter, Pete Alonzo. This guy with light tower power. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. First pitch, and he just misses. Way to lay off that pitch down. That one outside. Yeah, that's ball two. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. One out. Runners at first and second. Two balls and a strike. Here it comes. Swing and a miss, and he was fooled. That's one of those swing now before the pitchers even let go of the baseball. And the right hater deals. Gets a piece and stays alive. Runners at first and second with one gone. Line drive, base hit. Runner around third on his way to the plate. One runs in. Throw comes in and holds the runner at third. They're at the corners now with still only one away. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets into a count, the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. Substitution being made at first. Entering is the pinch runner, Eduardo Escobar. Jeff McNeil, the next to hit. RBI knock for him last time. Now a chance to drive in another run. And first offering is fouled off.
And I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. Two on, one out. Look out! And it hit him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Nick Martinez takes over on the mound. These are the spots where relievers really make a name for themselves, late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. Martinez. Brett Beatty up now for the Mets. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation. Yeah, but not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an in bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. That's towards center. Grisham pulls that one down. Runner tags for home. He scores. That's a big sacrifice fly. And now they trail by one. There you go. Nice little RBI there. It's a great at bat. Got the job done. Mark Canna up now for the Mets. Pitch misses inside. Ball one. Well, this is a critical spot for both the pitcher and the hitter. You can learn a lot about a guy by how he handles these pressure situations. And the 1 0. And that's in there at the knees. Big spot. Two out. Both the tying and go ahead runs are aboard. The 1 1 is fouled off. Sometimes he wears the emotion on the sleeve, but that's okay as long as he's getting results. And right there, thrilled with the punch out to get out of a jam. Now into the reason. game, Eduardo Escobar. He takes over as the new first baseman. Now playing first base. Taking Number over on the mound for the Mets, Eduardo Brooks Raley. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Number 25, Brooks. Really? So the lineup flips Way over. Trent front, Grisham man. getting ready to the hit. He's already homered here in this one. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is I want to stay square to the plate, try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. That's in for a strike. Well, that's really the money spot. Down and away, if you can locate that consistently, it's going to be real tough for guys to square that up. That's what you love to see relievers do coming out of that bullpen. Going to now. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth okay. inning. Down one. Any leadoff no base runner field. really makes this inning wow. a bit more interesting. But now no, this offense no. has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just try to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. There's a line drive to left field. Canna makes the catch, and there's two away. Hey, man, four pitches, two outs. Number that is an excellent base. Brandon. Brandon Dixon, Dixon, the next up for the Padres. Swing and a foul straight back. The wind of the pitch. Ball. Action in the pen down there. Dominic Leon getting ready to go. That one in the dirt. Two balls and a strike. Good slider down and in can be so hard to get on plane with. You're better off taking that pitch. That one in for a strike, two and two.
On the ground to third. Inning over. So they go quietly there through eight full. It's the Padres five and the Mets four. So they turn to their closer, Josh Hader. Now this is an extremely confident pitcher. He loves the pressure. Actually likes a one-run game better than a comfortable three-run save opportunity because that's when he pitches his best. And now the DH, Daniel Vogelback. The designated hitter, Daniel Vogelback. Here comes a pitch. And he grounds one to the right side. Kim with the throw to first. And the leadoff man retired here in the ninth. Francisco Alvarez. Francisco Alvarez up now for the Mets. there for strike one. The tying run at the plate. Yeah, there's the strike. Wow, just a beautiful back row slider right there. If you've got any chance of hitting that pitch, you have to wait until the absolutely last millisecond. Just a tough pitch to hit, and not an easy one to throw either. One, two now. And that one almost got him. And now two and two. Battling here as he fouls it away. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Here's the 2-2. Brandon Nimmo up next for the Mets. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. Hey, fastball the letters frozen for strike three. No, well, just couldn't pull the trigger on the fastball right there, and I don't think he was taking it, thinking it might be a called ball or anything. I just think he was flat out frozen. Did not expect that location, in my opinion. Back to the top of the Mets order, Brandon Nimmo now at the plate. And the first pitch misses for ball one. One run game here at the top of the ninth. Next offering is down low. Two and oh. To the right side, Kim. Throw to first, ball game. And the Padres hold on to win a tight one as this one ends as a one-run ball game. Well, this was a tightly played game. Got a little of everything. Some timely hitting, runs on the board. Key pitching and defense in certain spots. Definitely a fun one to watch.
The final line score for this afternoon's ball game for the victorious San Diego Padres. Five runs on four hits, no errors, and they left one man on base. For the Mets, four runs on eight hits, no errors, they left six men on base. The winning pitcher is Hugh Darvish. The loss goes to Max Scherzer. Time of the ball game, three hours and 13 minutes. Thank you for joining us here this afternoon. And we remind you to please drive home safely.